this video, I want to talk about the 1985 Mr. Olympia. Now, the 1985 Mr. Olympia was an interesting one for a couple of reasons. Number one, Lee Haney would return for the second time to the Olympia stage to defend his Mr. Olympia title, which he won for the first time in 1984, and further solidify his place as one of the greatest Mr. Olympias of all time, um, and really beginning that reign and letting people know Lee Haney was here, you know, to stick around. This was going to be a guy that was going to be winning multiple Mr. Olympias. And this really solidified the beginning of the Lee Haney era at the Mr. Olympia. Um, now, another interesting thing that happened at the 1985 Mr. Olympia was the Sergio Oliva retirement. So Sergio Oliva Sr. won the Mr. Olympia in 1967, 1968, and 1969 and would return to the Mr. Olympia after a hiatus from the IFBB in 1984. So in 1984, he would take 8th place at the Mr. Olympia, and he would come back again at the 1985 Mr. Olympia. Now, Sergio Sr. would take 8th at the 1985 Mr. Olympia, and this would be his final appearance on the Olympia stage, um, and he would retire from bodybuilding after this appearance. So in that sense, the 1985 Mr. Olympia was historical from the standpoint of it was the last time we would see three-time Mr. Olympia Sergio Oliva on a competitive bodybuilding stage. Now, another historical moment that happened at the 1985 Mr. Olympia was the second place finisher. So Albert Beckles, who was known as one of the bodybuilders that competed um, at an older age than most, competing as a top-level IFBB pro well into his 60s, at the 1985 Mr. Olympia, he took second at more than twice the age of Lee Haney, which is something that I don't think has ever been done before and hasn't been done since on the Olympia stage, where the runner-up at the Mr. Olympia was twice the age of the winner of the Mr. Olympia. I think the closest scenario that we had to this scenario was back in 2015, where Dexter Jackson took second to Phil Heath. I think that was the second biggest age gap from first to second um, in comparison to Albert Beckles versus Lee Haney. So that was a very historic moment in bodybuilding history. Now, the other interesting thing about the 1985 Mr. Olympia was the legendary lineup that you had at this Olympia. So not only did Albert Beckles take second here, but he took second in a very impressive lineup. So Rich Gaspari took third here. Obviously, Rich Gaspari is a legend in his own right. He was the first ever winner of the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. He had Muhammad Makawe coming in fourth here. Muhammad Makawe being one of the few bodybuilders to actually beat Lee Haney on multiple occasions. Um, so he had that distinction uh, going for him going into this Olympia. He had Mike Christian, Barry DeMay, who's better known as the Flexing Dutchman, coming in sixth place here. Then in seventh place, you had Tom Platts, um, who Tom Platts basically got back in the hunt at the 1985 Mr. Olympia. He had been on kind of a decline ever since that 1981 Mr. Olympia where he took third. He would take 6th in 82, then he would drop all the way down to 10th when he competed at the 1984 Mr. Olympia. So 1985 was kind of a redemption Mr. Olympia for Tom Platts, getting back in the hunt by placing 7th there, um, imp improving his placing by 3 places. And then of course in 8th place at his final Mr. Olympia appearance, you had Sergio Oliva, you had Bob Paris coming in ninth, who was voted the most aesthetic bodybuilder of all time. Um, by Flex Magazine in 2006. And then, of course, outside of the top 10, you had guys like John Brown, Tony Pearson, Danny Padilla, um, Jacques Novell, Johnny Fuller, um, and 24 total competitors at the 1985 Mr. Olympia. So a very impressive lineup um, and just a legendary array um, of classic-looking physiques.